Jones, the Smith, there's a lot of Smiths, Tim and Emily, uh, the Sarmientas, the Neppers, the Rules, Mike and Rebecca. If you guys are here, whoever's here, just come on up real quick. Uh, don't be embarrassed. We're just glad you... Oh, Brandon, is Brandon here too? Where's Brandon? I saw his... I'm, I'm trying to read fast without my glass. Yeah, Brandon's on this list too. Thank you. Um, just got to... We just kind of snagged some of our under... Come on up here, girls. Your husband's not here. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you can cling to each other. Um, uh, you know, you know what it's like when you got a husband who has a problem with the bar. Uh, come on over here. You girls stay. You already got a mic. Stay there. You see Tim and Emily, come on over here. Here, let's see who else is over there. Let's uh, get a couple of microphones here. And you got to come up closer to the pulpit because they can't see you back there. Come on over here, Mike and Brittany. This, this is a great story, Mike and, and Brittany. God was so after this guy, to use the young people's colloquialism. He was so after you. How many people talked to you before you started coming? Tell us how you heard about us. Um, well, I actually had my first encounter. His with, encounter? Uh, <laughs> with, uh, with Faith Baptist. It, it actually involved my mom yelling at me, telling me to clean the shrubs in the front of the house. And so my wife and I, um, we were... On our way, I think we were out to another church, and uh, I was cleaning the shrubs real quick, and I found a track. And uh, with that a track from our church. Yeah. Okay. And my wife was like, "Yeah, you know, all these other churches we've been going to, it's there's something wrong with them. There's, there's, it's not right." So uh, we came the next Sunday, and uh, it was. She said it was the right church. I was like, "Okay, well, yeah. it's the right church." So didn't you have some people at the bank? Uh, yeah. bothering you for withdrawals yeah. and they didn't have enough money? Well, um, I do work at a bank and it seems like everybody at Faith Baptist banks at my bank. And so I'd always see all these people coming in and I, there's something different with, about them, you know. And I just realized, hey, you know, they're all Baptist, you know. So um, anyways, about, I want to say it was, when was that? It was about 14 months ago. In a week's span, I had probably about 17 or 18 different people invite me to church. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, something's going on. Well, the last, the last person to actually sit down at my desk was actually Pat and Carrie Cook. And Pat was like, hey, man, we have, uh, we have a new, we, we, we got a new uh, Sunday school class, a Crossroads class, and, and you know, everybody's your age, you love it, you can come down. And I was thinking about it, it was a little iffy because he was wearing a Lakers hat. <laughs> So um, I went home, I told my wife about it. I said, yeah, you know, I, I, I literally got bombarded with all these invites. So had you been to church for the, fir the first time before or after that? We had come off and on. Okay. Probably about in 04. Okay. Um, and we so just sometime kinda, before then. Yeah, we just kind of got busy. I mean, what, it's not an excuse, but, you know, we're worldly, I guess, heathen. Yeah. You know? Those are um, my thoughts. <laughs> um. So when I went home that day, I told, him about Pat's I told her about Pat's invite, and she was telling me how a lady had been knocking on our door, inviting us to church, and wow. it was the Carlsons. I guess her sister had stuck the Carlsons on us to bring us, <laughs> drag us to church. Uh, so we just great. finally realized, hey, you know, we got to go. Um, and we've been coming ever since, so we've been Amen. here for about 14 months. That's so great. Good. Praise the Lord. How about over to Anthony? How'd you hear about us, Anthony? Well, I'm originally from uh, Texas, so... Um, One of our bus there. routes was probably over yeah. there knocking on your door. <laughs> yeah, Brother Beavers was out there. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so we're originally from Texas, and uh, right after I got out of the military, um, when I met Tiffany, I was like, we need a church. And I don't know what told me about it, but I was like, we need a church. I never really had a church background. And um, so we found a church out there in uh, Mesquite. And then in, in 2009, um, I was reading this little book about, you know, about Jesus and something I wanted to know more. And the church that we were at, at the, in my hometown in Ennis, I wasn't really getting a lot. So um, I told my wife, I said, uh, why don't you call up your aunt and uncle and see what we got to do to move out there and just try out the church. So... Um, I was talking to him back home when I was back this home. This is Wes and Scarlett yeah, Morgan he's Morgan, talking about sorry. now. And um, I was talking to him on the phone. I was, you know, just asking questions. I was like, well, what if we move up there? I don't like the church. Do I have to do, I have to, go to the church there? Or, well, you know, trying to figure out what we have to do. 
And they were pretty much laying down the rules for us, saying, well, if you're going to live with us, this is what, what's going to happen. I'm like, all right. So uh, back home, we sold everything we had, pretty much uh, gave some stuff to my, my parents. And we packed everything up in my little car, and we drove all the way out here to California. And I remember when we got here, it was on a Wednesday evening, and I really didn't want to go to church just because, you know, I it was like, I just drove, you know, thousands of miles. Like, I don't want to go to church tonight. So we ended up coming, and I remember the first service, preacher's up here preaching, and there were some teenagers over here, and they're being disruptive, and he got on to them. I was like, okay, I kind of like this church because... <laughs> At the other churches, you know, they didn't really do that. So I was like, well, this is, this is, this is going pretty good so far. And then um, so we started coming, um, well, because kind of we had to, because we were living with Morgan. So, <laughs> But we, I started liking We started liking it. And um, as we came, I, I started learning more. And I realized that I wasn't saved, and I didn't know what that was. And um, started hearing the preaching. And I went out with a Brother Morgan when he went soul winning. And I, and I learned how to be saved. So in my head, I, I assumed I was saved and I got baptized. So the whole um, time we were here in 2009 and 2010, it, something kept eating me because each time we came to hear preaching or Brother Morgan in his class, I kept feeling that I wasn't saved. But I knew how to get saved. I knew uh, I saw Brother Morgan get people saved. I knew where to find it in the, in the Bible. But for some reason, it was still eating at me. And I remember last year, at, uh, June 8th, Brother Teth was here. He was preaching. It was a Wednesday, Wednesday evening. One of his sermons was uh, about letting things go. And he got to one part in the sermon talking about letting anxiety go. And he goes, if you're not saved, you know, get it settled now. Well, uh, that evening when I got, got back, to, back home, um, I got down on my knees and I, you know, made sure I, I got it settled. So that following Sunday, that's when I was saved. Uh, I was saved after that. Amen. So, but um, now, I'm, you know, I'm glad that I'm here. I'm glad that uh, God led me here because... At the age of three, I was ran over by a car. Doctors uh, said that I was lucky to be alive. And then I was in Afghanistan, you know, being shot at by the Taliban or whatever. And not realizing at the time that I was supposed to be here. And now that, now that I look back, I, God had a plan for me to be here, uh, to bring my family out here. Because if, I, if the Morgans didn't open up, the door, uh, open up their home for us to come and live with them, we wouldn't be here, no telling where we would have been in our lives right now back home in Texas. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that the church Amen. was here. I'm glad that they opened up the door for us. Amen. That's great. Well, yeah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Anthony. How about Tim and Emily? How'd you hear about our church, Tim? <laughs> uh, I've pretty much been going here my whole life. Um, uh, my, my parents were coming before I was born. Ended up growing up here at the church. Grew up in a, you know, as, as Brother Patterson was saying, Brian, as I know him, uh, you know, we grew up loving the place. I mean, there was no place but this place, you know. And uh, me and my parents will talk often. We talk about how there's so much more fun when you're at church than out in the world and how we have so many more opportunities here at the church than you would out in the world. And, you know, we, we, we kind of joke about it and how much trouble I would get into and how, you know, little the trouble was. But, uh, you know, I grew up here my whole life. Um, Probably about kindergarten, I thought I had been saved, and I, I went through it, and I, and I struggled, and I battled with it for a long, long time. And um, in 1997, March 23rd, uh, Brother Desk, and I'm not sure if he's here tonight, he's probably working if he isn't, if he, if he isn't here, but, uh, you know, he was preaching out back over here under a tree, because we didn't have the facilities to house everybody. We had a tree and a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, chairs under a tree, and when I wasn't watching the, uh, the skydivers going... <laughs> I was, I was listening. I was listening to him preach, but uh, that, that that Sunday, I was I was I was listening that Sunday, and he was going over salvation, and it really hit hit home. It hit my heart, and it really it really dug deep. And right then, I knew I was like, I'm not saved. I, you know, I need to get this taken care of. So Amen. right then, there at the Amen. end, he gave an invitation, and I decided, you know, I'm gonna you know I want to do this. So uh, from there, I you know I went I, I went through the school here, the Christian school, graduated from high school, went back to Bible college. Went there for uh, three years, and on my last year, literally the the last the last week of school, we were done with, we were done with finals, everything. I met my wife, and uh, so uh, I came back home and was planning on staying here for the summer. And then when, when I got here, we were texting and talking a little bit during the summer. So I decided I'm going back to school for the summer because <laughs> <laughs> summer she, school's looking good. <laughs> she lived she lived a couple hours north, so it, it kind of worked out perfect, you know. And uh, so I went back to college for summer, did some summer school. And then through that, you know, we, we, you know, we, we got into a relationship and started dating. 
And because of that, you know, we ended up getting married. But uh, before, you know, b- before we moved out here, her pastor had offered me to just stick around and work there at the, at the church. You know, he loved, he loved having me around. I was there every weekend at, at the church up there, uh, Brother Noonan up there. Right. And, you know, he, lo- he loved having us around. And, you know, I got thinking, I came to a crossroad where I had to decide where I wanted to raise my family. And I got thinking, you know, there's, there's one place I knew was stable, and I, I knew there was one place that, I, you know, that was always the same. And I got thinking, where could I raise a family and raise it right? And it was here. And, you know, so I decided I was coming back here no matter what. So yeah. literally I packed up my car, or my truck, with like, like 300 bucks. And I, and I started driving out to California. <laughs> And I get about halfway, and her and her friend, her and her friend were in the car, were in the truck also. She was going to go to to uh, Lancaster for school that the next year. And I said, "You got any cash so we can get so we can get so we can get home?" And I said, "I don't got enough gas money," so I had to borrow some money from her to get to get back. But, uh, <laughs> That's a woman of faith. <laughs> but through all that, it's been good. I mean, the, the place is the same. I love it here. Amen. Oh. Thank you so much. Thanks for bringing this lady with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. How about Brandon? Tell us about what the Lord's done for you, who he used it. Again, just like in each one of these cases, it's just it's a different person. There's no magic here. There's people that God uses. Go ahead, Brandon. A couple months ago, you came to our class, or somebody for, on your behalf came to our class and asked us to fill out a 3 by 5 card, answering basically what you just asked me. wish I would have filled out the card. <laughs> <laughs> didn't know that if you didn't fill out the card, you had to stand up in front of everybody and tell them. <laughs> Honestly, the reason I didn't fill out the card at the time is because I really didn't have a clear answer to the question. So I, I, I began to think about it a lot and ask myself why I was here. And uh, to put it simply, frankly, I, I started coming here because my best friend was here. And uh, I lost him at the beginning of this year, and uh, I'm still here. Amen. And uh, I remember going through that, and it was a rough experience for me, something I've not ever experienced before. And I wasn't handling it very well. And I was uh, trying to go about my business the day after it happened and just uh, stick to the schedule and not think about it too much. And I went to the gym, and as I was walking out of the gym, I, I, I bumped into Mrs. Carlson. And uh, she asked me if I'd known him, and, and I think it was at that moment it all came crashing down, and, and I just fell apart. And I was trying not to show her, I was trying to hold it in, and, and I just fell apart, and I went to my car, and I just lost it. And I drove down the road a couple of miles, and I pulled over, and I was just trying to gather myself, just trying to pull it together, and my phone rang. And it was a number I didn't recognize, and, and to be honest, I didn't want to answer. Here I was, falling apart, and, and really didn't want anybody to see me like that. But, you know, I figured it was a number I didn't recognize. It could be a friend of ours who needed some information. And I answered the phone. And it was you, Pastor, that was calling me that day. Oh. And uh, Matt Banghart said a couple of days ago that, that when he said why he comes here and why he loves it here, he said it's a lot of little things. I couldn't agree more. It's a lot of little things. You constantly say when you're preaching that people are going through things. Yeah. Be good to people. Amen. And I was in the midst of a, a storm. And... Uh, just that little thing meant a lot to me. And if I could speculate on one of the things I think is greatest about this church, I've seen that uh, your people follow you. They follow you in a way that I've never seen before in any church I've ever been to. And uh, just to give an example, a couple of days later, I was sitting here in one of these pews, still feeling sorry for myself, having lost my best friend, the only real friend I had left in the world. And Mike Strickland came up and sat next to me. And we started talking, just small talk, talking about sports. I think we were talking about the UFC. And he invited me over to his house that weekend to watch a fight. Just, just a little thing, just a, just a little insignificant thing. But where I was in that moment, that meant so much to me. Amen. And, uh, and ever since then, I've just been learning from your example and, and seeing how good you are to people and seeing how much you obviously love people has changed my life. Amen. Thank you so much, Brandon. Oh, Praise man. the Lord. Lots of people. We're glad you're here. These two ladies, great ladies, are you okay to talk just for a minute? Katie, give us just a quick testimony. Um, I, my husband and I, we got married May 2nd in Missouri, and um, we had like a, a day honeymoon. <laughs> and then he moved out to California, and that Saturday, uh, Miss Ryan, some teenagers from Miss Ryan's bus route came to our house and gave my husband a track. I was still in Missouri. Um, I was finishing up my last semester of college and my husband called me and he's like, hey, there's Baptist church that wants us to come see them. And I was like, oh, <laughs> why? <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, was, I was raised Catholic, so it was very different. And, um, but he's had so and I was like, okay, let's do it. We tried um, that next Sunday that I came out 
and we just, my husband, he's like, this is it, this is, we don't need to look anymore, and, um, and I loved it, and then Brother Victor came up to us a few weeks after we started coming, and we'd started coming to Wednesdays, like, only after our second Sunday here, we just loved it, we were here all the time, and Brother Victor came up to us and invited us to Brother Morgan's class, and that was where, um, just, I started learning a lot more about what a true Christianity is, and it's not what I was raised to believe at all, but it was an actual relationship with somebody, and it was really cool to learn. Amen. And then I still was not saved. I thought I was. Um, being a Catholic, I just thought, if I'm good, then I'll go to heaven. And um, D- Dr. Dennis Coral came out and uh, for like a few days, and the first night we'd invited one of my husband's fellow Marines, and... I had prayed for that Marine to get saved, uh, thinking that I was saved in the second night. I was thinking, oh my goodness, I don't think I'm saved. <laughs> right? and, and then the third day, I'm like, oh gosh, I'm going to go to hell. And, um, and I am a stubborn, hard-headed woman, and I fought for three months against God. And um, I had been reading my Bible, because that's what pastor tells you to do. I wasn't saved, so I wasn't learning anything. Besides, I need to get saved. Um, but I did after three months of just fighting and fighting. And then um, and that was just awesome. I wrote my husband a note right over there. And I told him, I don't think I'm saved on the so offering. And in church, he's buying yeah. it. Yeah. And I said, I don't think I'm saved. I, I pushed it towards him. And he said, he screwed it away from me. I am not even lying. He's like, no, you are saved because we're married and that's, you're supposed to be saved. And, and, um, and anyways, I said, can you help me get saved? And we walked out of the church, like just right then. He like, grabbed my hand and he took me out. And he explained, you know, he's like, I can't do it. You have to do it yourself. And um, he's like, I can pray with you right now, but you have to do it. And um, so I was like crying. I was like, please do it with me, and he said no, and <laughs> so we came back out, and I'm just waiting for the altar call, I'm, I'm like shaking, I didn't hear anything, but I just was waiting, and I went up, and I got saved that Amen. September, and it was Amen. amazing, and ever since I've been learning. Oh, it's so good, great couple, he's still in the Marine Corps, wonderful military couple, thank you, Katie, what a good story, give her a hand, and um, hey, everybody matters, don't they? And everybody's stories, isn't it neat? You go through the Bible, you won't find any two people that got saved the same way. Just go through the Gospels. Uh, God deals with everybody individually. It's all through the blood. And it's all by faith. But what a wonderful Savior. And Katie, we love you and your husband. Yes, ma'am. What a good family. Rebecca and Levi also. He's Air Force. And he's the boomer. He's the one who hooks up to the to the fighter jets and refuels. He goes in the back of the Flying Arco station. And uh, what a great couple. Give us just a quick word of testimony how you found us, would you? Or? Well, um, my husband grew up in church and uh, we got married and I thought I was saved, but I didn't go to church. There's a lot of hard-headed women around, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> so after we got married, we started going to church and um, I continued to think I was saved until we moved here, and um, he got orders to California, and um, we actually came to Faith Baptist because Levi knew Ray and Charity from when he was a kid. So Ray Johnson, that's who sang the lead this more this evening in the opening song. <laughs> and that's kind of funny because they had we got the orders, and then they became friends on Facebook right after. So we were like, okay, and so um, we came here. We tried this church and Pastor um, Gibbs Church and. Levi decided that he felt God wanted us here, and um, so then we came for, I don't know, seven months until um, I realized that I wasn't saved, and I talked to Mrs. Goddard, and um, I guess I probably got saved about a hundred (laughs) times, you know, before that, and I just, it just, I don't know why, but um, after talking to Mrs. Goddard, um, I haven't doubted since. Amen. Um, That's good. That was last July. Wow. And um, I guess that's 
Thank the Lord. Praise the Lord. You two are here. And you'll like that. Get that thing settled. Get the doubt settled. Get it where you never doubt again. It's you and Jesus. And if you need someone to talk with you, and most of us will pray with you. Brian wouldn't pray with his wife, but most of us would. Oh, that's so good. Let's give him a hand. We'll let you guys go have a seat. Thank you, Tim. Thanks for being here.